Hello, I'm Vincent Verheyen, and I'm proud to share with you my custom solution for forward forecast consumption in SAP IBP, which has some advantages over the SAP IBP standard forecast consumption. I hope you may find this beautiful in an abstract mathematical sense, even if you're not familiar with supply chain or with forecast consumption. Last year, while I was working on a large-scale SAP APO to SAP IBP migration project as a freelancer, my customer asked me, we would like to have forward forecast consumption. However, we noticed that the planners often seem confused about the end results. Can you not implement a type of backlog which visualizes to the planners how large of a quantity of forecast is being consumed exactly for each month? in case of a deficit of forecast that is being pulled from the past forward to consecutive months. I was up for the challenge, but I quickly realized that there was one problem in order to create this backlog, namely that the SAP IBP cumulative aggregation sum function keeps aggregating the positives over time. Whereas in our backlog case, we would like it to reset whenever we pass the cutoff value of zero, that is, whenever we reach a non-negative output. But how to achieve this reset? I asked for advice in the SAP community, but SAP colleagues could not come up with an immediate solution. In the end, I was able to come up with a solution using only SAP IBP standard key figure formulas, which very much satisfied my customer and which I would like to explain now. Contrary to the SAP IBP standard forecast consumption, my solution requires no extra master data setup. It is not license dependent as it only uses step standard key figure formulas. And it has no limitations such as you would encounter using the SAP IBP standard forecast consumption. Such limitations being, for example, not being able to use demand categories, shelf life IDs, or calculated key figures. Performance wise, I noticed lightning fast speed, even in the productive planning area with over a quarter million planning relevant products. Now let's look at exactly how I have come up with this new solution for forward forecast consumption in SAP IVP. In the first two rows, we see the default input for the SAP IVP standard forecast consumption, namely the forecast quantity and the sales orders quantities, which we want to consume. In the last two rows, we see the default output of the SAP IBP standard forecast consumption. You will notice that the total demand is equal to the open forecast plus the input of the sales orders. However, planners may not easily understand why in August there is an open forecast of quantity 8. This is because there is no backlog key figure or concept in SAP IBP standard, which is why I created my own custom calculated key figure algorithm to arrive at the backlog and subsequently at the output key figures, without the need for the SAP IPP standard forecast consumption. I will now walk you through the various key figures I have created to arrive at this backlog. The blue line, which is the first custom key figure 1, abbreviated KF1, is fairly straightforward. Namely, we will of course begin by subtracting the sales order input from the forecast input. We notice that in January, for example, we are already minus 100 forecast short, since we had 200 sales orders, but only forecast at 100. In February, we have a surplus of 30 forecast, since we only had 70 sales orders, but forecast at 100. Since we are doing forward forecast consumption, we would like to consume the forecast which we lacked in January as much as we can in February, which means that the blue 30 will become minus 70 in our next key figure. To achieve this, we invoke key figure 2, namely a cumulative aggregation sum of key figure 1. We notice the same consumption of the minus 70 lacked in February in March, where we had a surplus of 60 forecasted. This also goes well in April, where we had a surplus of 30 forecasted, and we now consume the minus 10 that lacked in March, arriving at 20 for April. So here, for the very first time, we have what we can call an open forecast, that is, the quantity 20 in April. However, 
Now we have switched the sign of key figure 2 from negative to positive. Ideally, we would like to have the cumulative aggregation sum in key figure 2 reset here to 0. Since we notice in May that there are no more negatives from April which we would like to consume. But nevertheless, the cumulative aggregation sum is of course blind to this, as it simply keeps adding the 20 of April, which was already positive, to the 10 of May. To be able to counter this summation of positive values after the first month where the sign has switched from negative to positive in key figure 2, we will need a few extra key figures. First, we create key figure 3, which only takes the positive values of key figure 2, since it is these positive values which keep accumulating our quantities higher and higher unwantedly. Next, since this problem of accumulating with positive numbers keeps going on for every future time we get, we will need key figure 4 to take the cumulative aggregation max of key figure 3, such that we know which amount we are too high exactly. Finally, in the green key figure 5 or what we will call the backlog, we can now subtract from our key figure 2 the key figure 4. This backlog clarifies exactly whether or not and how much we were still negative, that is we were still consuming the lack of forecast from the past in the current forecast. For example, we see that in July we are still lacking minus 52 in forecast. This clarifies to the user why we have an open forecast of 8 in August, namely because we had a blue forecast surplus of 60 in August and so we are subtracting from it the green 52 which we lacked in July. To arrive at an open forecast of 8. And at the same time, the planner can easily see where the green minus 52 is coming from, namely from the green minus 92 which we were lacking in June, which were then partially consumed by the blue 40 in July, to arrive at the minus 52. So naturally, we now create key figure 6, which shifts the backlog forward by one period. This allows us to add the blue with key figure 6, that is the green, backlog which was shifted forward one period to arrive at the open forecast using our custom key figures. We lose the negatives by doing a max zero on this sum. This allows us to still keep the 20 which was the result of the first switching of the sign in key figure 2 as open forecast but has now countered the extra adding of the 20 after the sign had switched to the 10 of key figure 1 which resulted previously in a 30 in key figure 2, which was in fact 20 too high. So we see in the open forecast that we now indeed only take the quantity 10 and not 10 plus 20, in case the previous month had no sign switch from negative to positive in key figure 2. In essence, we have discovered a way to reset the cumulative aggregation sum of key figure 2 when switching the sign from negative to positive. This is so because the green backlog will always be a zero in the month where the switch happened. The green backlog will equally be zero in months where key figure 2 stayed positive and there was no shortage of forecast in key figure 1. Which means that key figure 6, which shifts the backlog by one period, will not add any quantities, thus not making our open forecast too high. Finally, we can easily arrive at our total demand by adding the sales orders back to the open forecast. This was Vincent Verheyen. I hope you may have found this video insightful.